In this position, there's a lot going on. So, well, first of all, white has four good pass pawns, the H, G, E, and D pass pawns, and in compensation, black has an act, uh, a black has an active rook, active knight, and a pawn in the third rank that is worth way more than one point. And since we are playing black, we might, we, we're probably going to win this position. So there's a few cannon moves here. The first is F2, trying to promote. The second and the third is the two knight checks, knight to B2 and knight to F2. And the fourth is rook to E1. For, of course, we're going to go through all four of them. And first, the, maybe the most obvious, F2, trying to promote to the queen so that we can win. Although it's pretty obvious that we can rule out that because we're never going to make it to F1 because, well, there's knight there, there's, an, uh, there's rook there, the king can just move one square if he wants to uh, to protect that pawn. So that's basically totally ruled out. And by that time, well, E5, and now boy is going to start rampaging his town, uh, rampaging his pounds down the board. So F2, not right. Let's look at knight to b2 check. And I'm just going to tell you that the best move, or the best defense for white, is king to c2. Now there are no more checks and there's no more threats, because, well, the knight is under attack, so if no, I don't know, like, rook to c3 check is going to do the job. Although there is one little tricky move, knight to d3, and the idea is that if you dare take my pawn, well, then I fork you, And then hopefully I can use my rook to defeat your four pawns. Although, well, first of all, white doesn't have to take that pawn. And second of all, there is a nice move, a very beautiful move. And it's knight takes f3. And first it looks like we're falling into the trap again, right? Because, well, you still get forked. Sorry, you still get forked. Yet, no matter what white does, for example, let's go there. Like it's a really active king and three extra pass pawns, and usually a knight cannot defeat three extra pass pawns, one on the fifth rank, one on the fourth rank, and one on the third rank. And of course, white's knight is all the way back on h2, it is really passive. So by the time white a uh, black knight gets back into uh, gets back into the position, well then white spawn has already promoted. So it's like knight to b2 won't do the job. Well, let's look at the other knight check. Knight to f2. And again, I'm going to say to tell you that the best move is king to c2. And another tr another few tricky moves. Rook to c3 check. King to b1. Uh, the only reasonable move. Or, I'm sorry, the only move. And then knight to d3. And, and here's the idea is that if you take my pawn again, then check, and then I win your knight. Uh, wherever you may your king. I mean, you're not. Although, again, there's white has four extra pass pawns and a rook against a rook and knight. And again, they're, like, black is basically out of checks, and there's probably no way black can checkmate. So again, this is still a winning position for white. Now there's only one move left. You might guess that the winning move is rook to e1 check. And again, you might guess the best move is king to c2. But then we just wrap around the king. And even though we lose our knight, we find that a very nice rook to c3 ends in checkmate. As, like I said, that pawn that's worth more, way more than one point. In fact, here it's worth a whole checkmate. Guards the precious e2 square. The rook, and, and the rook is protected by the b pawn. The d square is protected by the c pawn. The, um, the E3 square is obviously x-rayed by the rook, so very nice checkmate in the center of the board.